church worship you share
My message is titled, Change Me, O oh God. Um, about a few months ago, I had asked uh, Dorothy, can you hey, do a message? Can I come into a message? But at the time, I did not know what I wanted to do, but I felt led to do something. So um, as I struggled through it, I uh, said, you know what? I'm going through a lot, been through a lot. People need to know. They need to know what Miss Stanley is going through, how Miss Stanley is feeling. Because sometimes, you know, you ask someone in the morning time, good morning, and you're like, okay, good morning. And then they're going to go by their business. But in the back of their head, it is not a good morning. It's not. So um, I told her I was going to do it. And I'm, I'm doing it, keeping my promise to the mission, keeping my promise to God as well. My title is Change Me, O oh God. My reference scripture is from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. 
And as I read that chapter, it had an exclamation mark at the end because that brings celebration to a new life. According to the Western Dictionary, the, de the definition of change is to make someone or something different, alter or modify. The word change can be used in many different ways. Today, I would like to use that word as a verb in this message. I heard the today in our Sunday school lesson said it's more of an action word. So if you want to use it as an action word, let's use change as an action word because something has to be done. So when you hear me say, change me, oh God, I'm asking God to alter, to fluctuate, to modify, reform, shape, shift, and transform my life according to his will. I want you to know these words because these are the words that I continue every day to ask God to do for me. Change me, oh God. Transform me, God. Shift me, fluctuate me, so I can fit into whatever situation that is in front of me. I chose this title because God is using me in so many ways. He has placed me around believers and non-believers. I need to change my life so that I can worship him wholeheartedly. Because that's one of his requirements is to worship him wholeheartedly and be obedient and be committed to him. I wanted this change so I would not become a product of this world but a resource or a vessel God hands to those are that are in need. I work in the school system and I see the need each and every day. And sometimes I can't even hold my emotions because of what I'm looking at and what I'm seeing. There is a need. Matthew 28 and 19, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. When the world knows that you are trying to make a change in your life, it will attack you on all fronts. Your marriage, your home, your church, your children, your job, and anything else that you call a blessing from God, it's going to attack you, attack you. But Romans 16 and 17, verses 17 to 18, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause the visions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetite, their own agendas. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of the naive people. We see that daily now. Kids, 16, 17, 12 year old, the 12 year old that was killed, Jalen, was one of my students. So when I say there's a need, there's a need for all of us to change in some kind of way, a need. The first scripture that came to me that fit the change that I was asking God was Psalm 51, 10 to 12, verses 10 to 12, which says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. But see, some things that I was going in my spirit wasn't right, just didn't feel right. Cast me not away from thy presence and not take and not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because I know the Holy Spirit, if he is in me, but sometimes we have to let him in us, in our situation to help us. So I know where my help comes from. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. 
You probably saying, Miss Anna, why do you want to change? Can I just talk to y'all just for a minute now? I'm gonna take my time on this part because I really want you to understand that just because I am a believer of Christ does not mean that I sometimes will fall. I am sometimes led the wrong in the wrong direction. Because if you are in a working in a working environment. There's going to be some things that, is, that, that go on in that environment that will change the way your thought processes are. It will make you forget about what you're supposed to be doing in that moment. Why I want it to be changed. You see, on April 26, 2024, we learned that Warner Park was closing its doors. The interim principal called us to the hallways to announce we were closing. The day before, we had just come from a job. What do they call it? A job um, fair. Thank you. And we had no idea our thought process. We're taking names, we can speak up our men to possibly be a part of our team at that at that moment. But on April 26, we learned that one apart was closing its doors. The interim principal called us to the hallways to announce we were closing. I wasn't scared or anxious. I remember watching the other teachers' facial expressions and hearing negative things. After hearing about the school closure, I began to hear and see the devil doing his best work. Kid you not, it did not take a good five minutes after she said that one part will be closing his doors for good that the devil started to work. He was working on all of us, including me, I'm not going to leave me out, including me. He was working on all of us through each other. Because that's what he does. He doesn't work through Miss Stanley by herself. He's going to get everybody that has the same process thoughts and put them all together. And like my husband said earlier, they're going to work together to bring down whoever that was in their way. That's what he does. What I learned is that you do not know someone until their life is turned upside down. You don't. You can say all day, baby, I'll be there for you. But see, you don't know what that person is thinking as their life is being turned upside down. This is when you see the real person. You can see that their faith, hope, is gone. You can actually see it. In a situation like that, because most of the people that at that campus, we have been there for 10 or more years. So we're not talking about a new teacher. We're talking about old teachers in their old ways and doing things their way. You can see what faith and hope look like. So during this trial, I got to see what it actually looks like and what it sounded like. And what it sounded like was not what God sounded like. You can even see the devil in them. There was one teacher that was so, I don't, you can just see the devil in her the way she was pouncing around. Everything was so happy because see, she felt as though she never got what she wanted. So this was like a Okay, now I'm going to be with y'all. So her attitude was negative through this whole process. And so every time that she would come around me, I could just see and hear the devil in her. And I didn't want to be around me. In this person, all in this person or persons, all that is left in that person is hopelessness. See, she didn't realize that her actions were that of the devil. He had already created hopelessness in her heart because he is the author of chaos and confusion, and that's what she did. 
She caused a chaos and confusion. These people tried to pull you in with them on this hopeless train. There were many times when she tried to pull me on that hopeless train, but I just would budge because I would smile and I'd go on my way and I wouldn't even comment on what some of the things that she was saying that I knew and know that was not true. What does a hopeless train come equipped with? When you see that train coming your way, just know that it is equipped with envy, pride, jealousy, gossip, greed, and etc. The evil there was so strong, I started playing my gospel music every morning when the kids arrived in the classroom, the gospel music was still going. They even, they could feel what was going on because you gotta remember the demographic that I teach in, teach in are from some of the kids don't have a home. Some of the kids don't have one running water. Some of the kids have been up all night long babysitting their brothers and their sisters, but got to come in and listen to this family for two hours. So I played my gospel music so the soul within them can be calm when they came in. To know that this is a resting place when you walk into this room, we're not having what the world is having. You can forget about what's going on in that cause. You can come in here and to know that you're going to get fed if you have not but I will have some pop toys or whatever to give you so that you know that in my classroom, you don't have to feel what the teachers are feeling. I don't want that baby to feel what that negativity that I'm feeling because if I'm negative, it's going to be moved on to that child. I refuse to do that. That is why I play my music so it can get me prepared for what I knew was going to walk in that door. It prepared me for this. Uh, at this time, I felt like I wasn't ready. Sometimes I would come into the, the classroom and I just didn't feel ready, spiritually ready for what is about to take, what was going on on that campus. I wasn't, I didn't feel ready. I felt like I needed to be strengthened. I felt like I needed to be reformed. I felt like I needed to be altered and transform back to what I knew where I came from. So I asked God to change me, oh Lord, that when I walk in this room, that I'm strengthened, that I'm reformed, that I'm transformed out of your will and not my will. Because if I was in my will, I would have took some days off because I had a need to take off for a whole month. But I did not do that because I knew those babies needed me spiritually and sober. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. I'm talking to him every day at this point. Every single day. Then a few weeks later, I received a phone call from someone who, wanted, who worked in a corporate position. She said that she had mentioned my name to the principal at Cattle Heights and to give him a call to set up an appointment. But to make sure I reference her name. Now let me go back to just a little bit on that. That corporate person was someone that I saw once a month for about two hours with 30 more teachers. And I never really talked to her. Never. She would walk around and she would, whatever activities that we were doing in this room, she would walk around, she would hear the discussion. But for some reason, she called me that day because she knew that the way that they were doing the hiring of that school and to transfer us, there was a phase, certified paper phase, certified CTA teacher phase, that was me, that is me. I'm in that phase, she knew this. But I had the opportunity at that point when she called to go and be hired with a certified paper teacher. 
Never really had a conversation with me, but she knew who I was. Based upon the projection of what I exposed to her in those classes. I got the position at Kettle Heights on day one. Wasn't I probably back later? He gave me a backpack and said, you in here. At that time, I was happy. I was happy. But something just, I got back in the car and calmed down because see, God works when you're calm and you can hear him. And excitement couldn't hear him. I was just, oh, I got a job, thank you, Jesus. Got in the car and something just did not feel right. Heart started aching. Started crying, didn't know why. Just didn't feel right. At this point, I was torn, and there were a lot of emotions and feelings that I, I, I needed to go and talk to God. Sat in that car and I talked to God, said, God, after going over the roster of teachers that were going to be at the school, Cattle Heights, I said, God, the teachers that are coming to the school where you just sent me now, see what I did there? Where you sent me. Those same teachers are going to be at that school. That's why all my emotions and my feelings were coming from. Because I felt like if they're going to be there, all the one I'm going through and sending me at my own school is going to. That train is going to choo 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 on down the street where all the envy, all the pride, all the jealousy is coming there. My prayer wasn't answered, by the way, because you know, I asked God, I said, God, can you send me somewhere? Because that's the first thing that we do send me somewhere besides going there. Send me somewhere. He didn't answer my prayer right away. To this day, I don't question why he didn't answer my prayer when I asked because the days and weeks went by. And I got to the point, I said, okay, just got to get prepared. I've been ready. So I went back to Philippians 4 and 6 again. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, the thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. I'm letting you know, God, I'm going to do it. But you got to be with me because it's going to be hard. And knowing that there was already some people there that when I spoke to them, when I walked in the building and spoke to them, I did not feel you, your presence in them. I did not feel you in them. See, I'm a, I am a very emotional person and I like to feel God in you. So when I'm talking to you, it's got to be a, a similar feeling. I didn't feel it. And I struggled with that for about a month. Then my current principal at one of the park called me and said, Miss Dan, I have a third grade position. Do you want it? Now, this principal that I have been under for four months, and some of y'all probably know, if you heard one of the park, there were some issues going on with our school with money. But to come back to what I meant is that this principal that came in for the four months, she is a believer. She came out first and told us when she introduced herself, she did it by scriptures of who she was. She pulled the scripture, this is who I am. I'm not changing who I am for you. So I know this teacher, this principal is a believer. So when she called me, she said, Miss Stanley, I have a third grade position. Do you want it? I said, yes. What? Yes, Lord, yes, thank you. And a day later, she texted me and said that the department head had already paid someone in that position. So my hopes went down. And I was like, I remember looking at my husband and like, I'm like, how do I tell my husband? But then I'm thinking, you got a job. Why are you worried about that job? He got you a job, right up the street, on the train with everybody else. 
My emotions went to overdrive, and I remember saying to God, let your will be done. Please place me where you want me to be and not me. See, in this situation, I had to remove me. Because what me being in this situation was not happening with the way that I wanted it to happen. Then I received a text from another student and they had offered me a position, but I turned it down because the Holy Spirit said, Be still. All right. I, I got this. Be still. So you few know, days passed, I received a phone call from my current principal at Warner Park. She offered me a third grade position in her new school, which is Athens, that wasn't available, but now it was. God answered my prayer on June 17, 2024, and I will remember this day for the rest of my life. I accepted the job. This experience taught me that I was not strong for that trial. You see, we go through a whole lot, and we have to separate those trials and what have we learned from their, those trials. In this particular trial, it taught me that I was not strong. Have you ever felt like after you were fully dressed, something was missing? You know, you don't put in your earrings, you got your, I don't know what it is, but it feels like something's missing. But you go on with your day. I felt like I wasn't using the tools and didn't have the strength that God would have wanted me to have used in this trial. So I started asking myself, if this situation happens again, how do I handle it, God? What do I say to people on the whole train? What do I say? I needed to return back to the foundation that God had given me. This meant putting on my battle or time. See, when I got dressed that morning, I got some things off of me. Because I wasn't wearing it all. I was wearing it all. You know how you put on a skirt and sometimes the spit on this side when it should be in the back? I was wearing my bag of a trial wrong. Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, 10 and 11 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the scheme of the devil. A lot of stuff is working against me, but nobody knows because I didn't say anything. A lot of things have been said to me. Real ugly things have been said to me, but nobody knows but me and God. See, I didn't have at that time. When all this was happening, I didn't have all of my armor on during that time. And in this trial, I realized I wasn't prepared. I was missing my armor. I asked God, so then I asked God to change me, oh God, that I can be strong in any trial. Change me, oh God, according to your will, not mine. Change me, oh God, that when I leave my house, I'm not only in my legendary clothing, but I'm hurting what you feel for me. Let me wear my belt of truth. Ephesians 6 and 14 says, having geared it to a long truth. See, when we wear our belt of truth and operate within it, like Tony Evans said, it will always align our mind. Our window and our motion under the load. Change me, oh God, so that I can continue to wear my breastplate of righteousness daily, so my heart is protected, so you can continue to pump and infuse life into me. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. I ask God to continue to let the his words infused into my life so that I can train her into someone else, and especially those kids. Change me, oh God, so that I can put on the shoes of peace. Let me use my shoes of peace to stand firm, no matter what circumstances come my way. Should I fall, give me the strength to get back up and not feel defeated. Prepare me to use the offenses and defenses to defend myself. And my peace. We know where peace goes. Don't let me use the word peace loosely like the word. You're going to take away my peace. You're coming here today with all that. You're going to take away my peace. No, I don't want 
want to use my peace like that. Because Colossians 3 and 15 says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. See, I want God to rule over my life every day. Change me, oh God, that I do not forget to wear these three pieces of armor all the time. Let me say that again. All the time. You see, I was wearing my armor, but I wasn't wearing it consistently. I may put on my belt one day and forget about my great place. See, I was wearing it all wrong. So I got to change me that I'm wearing all three every single day and all time. Because when you're sleeping, the devil can attack you. So I got to hold my armor on if I'm sleeping. So when he attacks me, that I can defend myself. Change me, oh God, that I pull out my shell of faith when hell, when all hell breaks out and when under attack. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall come and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. God is saying, I'll fight that battle with you, but you got to have on what I gave you. Change me, oh God, to truly believe that my faith is active if something is so, even when it appears not to be so, in order that it might be shown to be so, simply because God said so. We have to act upon that faith. Because I saw a lot of people just totally forgot about the faith that we used to have a conversation about. Let me pull my sugar faith out like that of Abel. No, no. Abraham, Isaac, and Rehab. For better to the Lord said, the righteous shall live by faith, by his faith. But then, God, what happened if I did not live by faith? Have you ever wondered or asked yourself, what would happen if you or and I did not live by faith? Hebrews 6 and Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please who is him. God, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, we start seeking him at point, times and points in our life throughout the day. I know now that I need to seek him all day. And I need to have my faith all day. This is what this is teaching me at this point. Change me, oh God, to put on the sword, of, the sword of the spirit so that I can fight in big spiritual war. See, this is not a war that we get out here and fight and we do get out in the street. This is spiritual. Ephesians 6 and 17 say, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I now know that I'm not fighting people, but I'm fighting the evil that is within them. This means that I must fight this evil with the word of God. Mark 9, 3 and 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. My husband said this morning it changed from Genesis all the way to Revelation. There was no change. Psalms 1, 9, 19 and 89 says, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm from the heavens. And Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. Matthew 24 and 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, God's words, will never pass away. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against 
principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. God, let us and let me continue to strengthen my sword of faith daily. I mean, let me continue to strengthen my word daily so that when the enemies attack, I'm ready for battle. That I can pull those scriptures and I can be in the defense. Change me, oh God, to put on my helmet of salvation so that when Satan tries to attack my mind, I can hear only your voice. Let my helmet protect my mind from the north, the north that Satan sends to distract me. Because he's coming. He's going to distract you. He's going to wait to the right time and the right moment to distract you. When I begin to do this, I am the self-control to thoughts that are planted in me by the enemy who seeks to harm my wall. See, at that time, those emotions that I was feeling at the time, I didn't know, but my emotions were being blessed. They were trying to harm my walk with Christ because they knew who I am and they know what I believe in. So they're gonna try it every they try it every moment that they can to harm my walk with Christ. Let me hear my covenant of salvation because let me wear my covenant of salvation because it gives me hope so that I can live every day focused on eternity and the promised future I have. He was Hebrews 8 and 10 says, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. See, I want to be the people that he's talking about right here. As I continue to talk and walk with Christ, I have to remember that my spiritual enemy is not just a matter of positive thinking, because you will hear that word being used all the time. I need you to think positive. I don't want it to be a matter of positive thinking. It's a matter of God-centered thinking. And as I close, today, I pray that someone here is seeking spiritual change. Do not let that hopeless frame turn you into someone God will turn away from. Because Matthew 7 23 says, and then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. We cannot serve God in our own way. Remember that our armor is the protection God has given us to protect ourselves from the devil. You are not too young or too old to change. Change is good. Especially when you know who you follow and belong to. Matthew 6 and, 4, 6 and 24 says, Then Jesus told the disciples, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You have to be available and willing to do what God requires. Deuteronomy said in 10 and 12, and now Israel, what God, the Lord thy God requires of thee, but to fear thy God, fear God, number two, to walk in his ways, not our ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. That is his requirement. Let the Lord take the will in all of your lives, your decisions, and equip you for the battle that you are headed to or coming from. Remember to reflect on those battles because there's a teaching in those battles. Matthew 6 and 32 says, But seek ye first and his righteousness and all the things will be added to you. Bless you all. Thank you for that message, wife. The doors of the church are now open. If anyone here has not fully surrendered to God, 
to do at this time while the blood is still running warm on the body. If you have a special need, and we have not had altar call today, let's use this moment also for prayer. So that the preachers and deacons and deaconesses around you and pray for your special need. Don't let this day go and not surrender. Do not let this moment pass. And you know that you're not right with God. You need to rededicate yourself to the Lord. This is the time. Don't let this be a fleeting moment. Anybody? The spirit will with anybody to make a change. We've done what the Lord's command us to do. Build up church are always open. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for Sister Stan. Stan and family. It's been a blessing. It's a privilege, my God. We've got a whole lot of talented people here. It's me to turn them loose. I want to God bless you, sir. So let's stand. Oh Lord, we thank you for this day. All to bring your same again. Thank you for that, that message. You promise to change us. Renew our minds. Promise to give us a new heart and keep us in that growing process. Grow in grace and in your knowledge. Bless all of this church family and a special blessing on our, our pastor. As we leave this place, Lord, never dismiss us from your presence. May your love now and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit bless you and abide with us until we meet again. Let's say amen. 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 That was good. <laughs>